Today, we're gonna to talk about a company whose products impact your life in ways you probably didn't even know about, Corning, stock symbol GLW. For example, you might be watching this video right now on your iPhone, whose glass was produced by Corning. What's that, you don't use Apple's smartphone? Well, the glass on Samsung and other Android devices is also made by Corning. The screen on your television, materials for the catalytic converter under your car, optical fiber that brings the internet into your home, Yep, Corning, Corning, and more Corning. And here's another thing that Corning produces, income for investors. Its stock has been paying a reliable growing dividend for years. Hi everybody, Mike Nadell here for the Dividends and Income channel. Before I talk more about this innovative and successful business, please do us a favor to help us grow. Hit the thumbs up at the bottom of the video, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you get notifications of new videos as we publish them. Okay, now let's talk a little more about Corning. What makes it unique? Its history, its business model, why we recently bought it for our income builder portfolio and how it might appeal to dividend growth investors. Investopedia defines a pick and shovel play as an investment strategy that invests in the underlying technology needed to produce a good or service instead of in the final output. It's a way to invest in an industry without having to endure the risks of the market for the final product. Well, Corning is your classic pick and shovel play. The company doesn't make semiconductors, doesn't make cell phones, doesn't make 5G networks, doesn't make cars, but its cutting edge products are absolutely absolutely vital to those industries and more. Ironically, one thing Corning no longer makes is Corningware. The company spun off that brand, as well as its iconic Pyrex label, and the rest of its consumer division almost 25 years ago. With that, let's talk a little more about the company's long history of innovation and growth. Corning's story began in 1851, when a businessman named Amory Houghton bought the Bay State Glass Company of Cambridge, Massachusetts. In 1868, the business moved to Corning, New York, and in 1875, Corning Glassworks was incorporated. The company would continue to go by that name, which explains its stock symbol, GLW until 1989, when it simply became Corning Incorporated. In 1879, Corning developed a bulb-shaped glass encasement for Thomas Edison's new incandescent lamp. The design became so successful that by the early 1900s, that product accounted for half of Corning's business. At that time, bulbs were made by hand, one piece at a time, limiting production to a few hundred bulbs a day. Eventually, Corning mass-produced the bulbs, which became an affordable must-have for Americans. In 1913, a Corning physicist asked his wife to bake a cake on a piece of heat-resistant glass, which held up well throughout the baking process. That was the precursor to the Pyrex brand, which was created two years later and became synonymous with the line of durable glass cookware that's in so many kitchens today. In 1934, Corning scientist J. Franklin Hyde developed silicones, an engineered material that's a cross between glass and plastic. Hyde's experimentation would eventually lead to the production of high-purity fused silica, which would be used to create products such as spacecraft windows, optical lenses, optical fiber, and telescope mirrors. In 1943, Corning partnered with Dow to produce silicones, and the joint venture came under the Dow Corning name. In the 1940s, Corning revolutionized the television industry by inventing a process to mass-produce TV picture tubes. Soon, the phenomenon of TV would become attainable for millions of people. In 1961, the Mercury spacecraft, equipped with heat-resistant windows made by Corning, made the first successful American manned flight. Corning would go on to create the window glass for every manned American spacecraft, from Gemini and Apollo flights to the Space Shuttle. In 1970, the company developed the first optical fiber capable of maintaining the strength of laser light signals over significant distances. That paved the way for the commercialization of fiber optics for telecommunications. It's an industry that's still growing rapidly. In 1972, Corning came up with the cellular ceramic substrate for automotive emissions control which is now the standard for catalytic converters worldwide. In the 1980s, research labs working on liquid crystal displays found that ordinary glass was not precise, stable, or durable enough to meet their requirements. Corning's fusion process made it possible for the LCD industry to construct large, high-quality flat panel displays. Dow Corning filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1995 after being sued for billions of dollars due to the manufacture of faulty breast implants. The joint venture didn't emerge from bankruptcy until 2004 leading to the eventual dissolution of the partnership between Corning and Dow. Corning made the glass for the Subaru Telescope Mirror in 1997. Located in Hawaii and shaped like a 27-ton contact lens, it was more than 26 feet across but only a few inches thick, one of the largest pieces of glass ever made. Cell phone manufacturers asked Corning to find a thin but damage-resistant glass for their devices and Gorilla Glass was born in 2007. It's become the standard for smartphones, tablets, and PCs, thanks to its superior protection against scratches and breakage while maintaining optical clarity and touch sensitivity. In 2008, Corning introduced Gen 10 Glass, 
which offered about 70% more surface area than the previous size. At about 9 by 10 feet, a single sheet of Gen 10 glass can produce several large TV panels, ultimately making this era's televisions more affordable. Two years later, Corning produced the Synthamax surface, which supports the growth and differentiation of stem cells opening the door to treatments of degenerative diseases. In 2015, Corning and Dow officially agreed to sever their joint venture. As part of the breakup, Corning received $4.8 billion and 40% of Dow's Hemlock Semiconductor Group. Corning now owns 80.5% of the world's leader in polysilicon production. Today's Corning is ranked number one in four separate industries, display glass, optical fiber, cover glass, and emissions substrates. It has significant relationships with Apple, AT&T, Pfizer, Verizon, Merck, and other large corporations. Corning spends upwards of a billion dollars a year on research and development. Its fiber production has made it a major player in U.S. carriers' build-out of their 5G networks. And Hemlock supplies crucial, ultra-pure polysilicon to the semiconductor and solar industries. Corning has operated under five segments. Display technologies, optical communications, environmental technologies, specialty materials, and life sciences. And during Corning's first quarter earnings call on April 26th, CEO Wendell Weeks announced a new sixth segment, Hemlock and Emerging Growth Businesses, which he said grew 38% year over year. Given the importance of semiconductors and just about everything we need to live our lives today, it's easy to see why Corning's CEO is excited to have control of a vital semiconductor pick and shovel company like Hemlock. As for the earnings report itself, it showed that the first quarter of 2022 was one of the company's better periods in recent years, leading weeks to say, we're off to an outstanding start in 2022 driven by broad-based strength across our businesses, led by 28% year-over-year sales growth in optical communications and continued favorable pricing and display. In the first quarter, company sales grew 15% year-over-year, with EPS growing even faster at 20%. We successfully navigated a complex geopolitical and external operating environment, and our innovations and pricing actions contribute to improved profitability. Looking ahead, demand for Corning content has never been greater. We expect strong top and bottom line growth this year as we advance innovations and remain focused on pricing, capital efficiency, and cash generation. He went on to say Corning expects full year sales to exceed $15 billion for the first time in company history, with Hemlock projected to provide about a tenth of that revenue. All right, now let's talk about Corning's growing dividend. In just about every year since 2011, Corning has increased its dividend by at least 10%. The stock yields just over 3%. Simply Safe Dividends gives Corning a score of 77 solidly in the safe range. And on February 2nd, the company announced a 12.5% raise for 2022. Here's what the company's chief financial officer, Edward Schlesinger, had to say when the increase was announced. Today's dividend announcement reflects Corning's confidence that we're building a solid foundation for the future, he said. We're well positioned to invest in the opportunities we see ahead while continuing to reward our shareholders. Growing dividends is an important component our ongoing priorities and for disciplined capital allocation. With this 12.5% increase to the quarterly dividend, we are again meeting the goal of at least 10% annual increases through 2023. As a dividend growth investor, I like companies that make a firm commitment to growing my income stream. The analysts at Morningstar have taken note too, saying, we rate Corning's capital allocation as exemplary based on a sound balance sheet, exceptional investments, and appropriate shareholder distributions. The firm has consistently balanced investments in its own innovation with dividends and share repurchases, and we expect this to continue. Corning's ex-dividend date is May 27th, so if you want to receive the next quarterly payment of $0.27 cents a share, you have to own the stock by market close of May 26th. Finally, let's talk about Corning's valuation, or how buyable the stock is. On this fast graphs image, you can see by the red circled areas that the current blended P.E. ratio is almost exactly in line with the multiple over the last several years. And the yellow highlighted area shows that earnings are expected to grow annually by double digit percentages to 2024. I also like to take a look at EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, because it's a more pure indication of profitability than earnings alone. This fast graphed image indicates that Corning is undervalued compared to its normal EBITDA multiple. Refinitiv's numbers say Corning has a forward PE ratio of 15.3 and a very attractive PEG ratio of 0.7. So it's not surprising that the analysts monitored by Refinitiv find Corning to be quite appealing with four strong buy ratings and seven buy calls. Forecasting about 70% price appreciation over the next three to five years, Value Line has included Corning on its list of stocks for dividend growth with low risk. Morningstar has established a $42 fair value estimate for Corning. CFRA has a $47 price target, and Argus came out of earnings very bullish, 
with a $54 target. Argus analyst Jim Kelleher says that GLW shares appear to more than discount the challenges ahead without fully reflecting myriad opportunities in Corning's varied end markets. That reference to varied end markets is what I was talking about early on, with Corning being a pick and shovel play because it's such a big part of so many industries that matter to all of us. The combination of the company's importance, its strong balance sheet, its growing dividend and its attractive valuation convinced me to add Corning to our income builder portfolio. So on May 11th, I executed a purchase order for about $1,000 worth of the stock on behalf of this channel. Our 28 share Corning position immediately added about $30 to the IBP's projected annual income stream, pushing the portfolio's yearly dividend total past the $3,700 mark. The income builder portfolio now has 48 positions. You can check them all out by clicking on the link in the description. Once on our dividends and income website, become a subscriber and you'll be notified whenever I write an article about my buys and sells. All right, guys, that's all for today. Again, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our content. Take it easy, everybody. Back to you soon.